Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to compute for the variance and the standard deviation using two approaches. So in the first part of this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use what we call the deviation method. And then later on, in the second half of this video, I'm going to, to demonstrate how to compute for the variance and standard deviation using the raw score method. Okay, so just a quick um, refresher before we proceed to the demonstration. So basically, the variance and the standard deviation is uh, are considered as measures of variability. So the greater the value of the variance and the standard deviation, the more that the data, the more that the numbers are scattered or far away from each other in a given distribution. So in other words, the larger the standard deviation, the, large, the more that the data sets are far away from one another, okay? Now, this is our given, okay? I do recommend that when you compute for the variance in the standard deviation, you can follow this kind of layout, okay? You can write each value in a column like this, arranged vertically, you know? the, we, follow, we can follow a vertical layout, okay? And then there should be a second column like this if we're gonna use a deviation method. And this should be how the third column looks like. Now, so later on, I will discuss what these symbols mean. And now let's begin by computing for the, um, before we compute for the variance in the standard deviation. Since we're gonna use the deviation method, it's important that we compute for the mean or the average, okay? So let's begin by computing for the mean, and we do that by first getting the total, getting the sum of all values. So we can do that by adding 20, plus 22, plus 28, plus 30, plus 37, plus 38. The value that we will obtain by, by adding, when adding everything will be 175. And to get the mean, we can divide 175 by the number of scores or the number of observations. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six given values or six scores. We will divide 175 by six. The mean is gonna be 29.17, 29.17. So this is our mean. Now, in the deviation method, what we do is that we, we determine the deviation or the distance of each score from the mean, and we are going to do that in the second column. So basically, the second column is where we put the deviation of each given numbers. So to compute for the deviation, for example, for the first number, 20, we can get the deviation by computing for the difference between 20 and the mean, okay? So 20 minus 29.17, the deviation is gonna be 9.17. So this is the deviation of 20. This is the distance of 20 from the mean, which is 29.17. And then let's follow the same, um, let's follow the same formula. Okay, let's do the same for all the given numbers. So we have here 22 minus 29.17. So we have here negative 7.17. Next, we have 28 minus 29.17. So we have here negative 1.17. Next, we have 30 minus 29.17. We're going to get 0 0.83. Next, we have 37 minus 29.17. We're going to get 7.83. And then finally, we have 38 minus 29.17. We're going to get 8.83. One characteristic of the mean is that if you add all the deviations, if you add all of these values, you're going to get zero. Okay, now that's one of the characteristics of the mean, but since we're concerned here with the standard deviation, how do we get the standard deviation? 
if the deviation is the distance of each score from the of a score from the mean, the standard deviation is basically the average distance of the scores from the mean. Okay, it is the standard distance of the scores from the mean. And how do we get that? Well, as you can see here, the reason why we reach zero, so it's some sort of dead end, is that the negatives cancel out the positives, which is why we get um, zero as the sum of all deviations. Okay? So to remove the negatives, in the last column, we have here what we call x minus x bar, whereas x is the score. X bar is the mean, just like with this one. But this time we have squared, meaning we are talking about squared deviation. So we're going to square each deviation. So in this case, we have 9.17 squared. That will be equal to 84.09. We have, we have um, 7.17 squared. That will be equal to 51.41. We also have, next, we have 1.17 squared. So this will be 1.37. Next, we have 0 0.83 squared. So that will be, that will be 0 0.69. Next, we have 7.83 squared. So that's 61.31. And then finally, for 8.83 squared, this is going to be 77.97. Okay? This time, let's add all the deviation, uh, all the squared deviations. And when you get the total of all of these values, the value that you're going to get is 276.84. Now, this value, 276.84, was obtained by adding all the square deviations, which is why this value is known as the SS, or the sum of squares. SS stands for sum of squares. And the reason why we computed for the sum of squares is that in computing for the variance, this is the variance. In computing for the variance, we need the sum of squares, which is this one. We divide it by the sample size, which is we have one, two, three, four, five, six scores. And if, it, if we're computing for the sample variance, it has a minus one in the formula. But if we're computing for the population variance, there's no minus one in the formula. Now, um, assuming that we're dealing with a sample, not a population, so let's put a minus one in the formula, okay? The variance is going to be okay, 276.84 divided by our n is 6 minus 1. Okay. The outcome of the computation is going to be 55.37. And to get the, so if this is the variance as squared, the standard deviation is the S. You simply get the square root of the variance. So the square root of the variance will be 7.44. This is the standard deviation. This is the variance. And that's how we use what we call the deviation method. So we have each score. We computed for the total. We computed for the mean. We obtained the deviation of each score from the mean. And then to remove the negatives, we squared all values and we got the square deviations here. When we added all the square deviations, we got the sum of squares. And the reason why we, got, we have to compute for the sum of squares is that it will be used in the computation of the variance, okay? So our variance is 55.37. Get the square root of the variance, and this is the standard deviation. Now, alternatively, we also have what we call the raw score method. 
in the ROS4 method, there's no need for us anymore, okay, to get, there's no need for us anymore to get the deviation, but instead we can simply get the, we can simply square each core, and there is a shortcut for us to get the SS. Okay, in this formula, the summation of x squared is the summation of squared scores. The summation of x is the summation of scores, whereas n is the sample size. Okay, so we can get the SS without doing this anymore. Okay, so we can get the SS by using this formula. Okay, so how do we do this? So let's begin by, once again, now, so we have the same given. I Earlier, I believe the mean is 175. Let me double check that. Yes, it's 175. I mean, the total is 175 with a mean of 29.17. Okay, and then in this case, instead of getting the deviation, we can simply square each course. Now we can simply square each, each score and then, so let's do that, 20 squared is 400. 22 squared will be 484, okay? 28 squared will be 784. 30 squared will be 900. 37 squared, that's 1,369. 38 squared, that will be 1,444. So we squared each core, and to get the SS, we need the following. The summation of squared scores, the summation of X, and the sample size. So we already have the summation of X. The sample size is, we have six. We're now looking for the summation of squared scores. If you get the total of everything, that will be 5,381. Okay. So let's compute for the SS using this formula. So let's substitute 5,381 for the summation of X squared minus, for the summation of X, we have 175 quantity squared divided by n, which is 6. We have 6 cores. So the SS is going to be 5381 minus 100 for a while. 5381 minus 175 quantity squared divided by 6. Okay. The value that I obtained is 276.83. Is this similar to the value that we got earlier? So in the deviation method, our SS was 284. Our SS was 284. In the raw score method, it's quite close. We got 276.83. So as you can see, there's so. The, the outcome is very close to each other. So even though there's a bit of discrepancy, well, that's acceptable. Okay, so that's the SS. So I believe the variance in the standard there would be the same, okay, since we're, we're using 276.83, okay? So if we compute for the variance in the standard depth again, this will be the outcome. As you can see, the standard, um, the variance that we got is just the same, as well as the standard deviation. Okay, that is it, everyone. For my demonstration on how to compute for the variance and standard deviation using the deviation method and the raw score method, I hope this video is very helpful. Thank you very much for listening, and see you next time. Bye, everyone.